Steve Borthwick, lads. England head coach. Shock. shock. Are you shocked? No. No. I don't, think, I don't think Richard Cockrell was either. Did, did Cockers know about it? I'm yeah, I think, um, yeah I, think, I think so, without knowing. Like, yeah. I didn't want to know too much, because if it didn't come out and I'm talking about it, and then Cockers told me, and I wasn't meant to say anything, but I, that was my first question. Richard, I've not seen you in five years. England coach? He said, yeah, for three more days. <laughs> there we go. So, yeah. Yeah, listen, it, it's... The RFU, they've made their play for Borthers. Um, it, there's a lot of muddled thinking, in my opinion, at the RFU. I've said it on here before around the succession plan. They're saying we accelerated the succession plan. Well, they didn't speak to Leicester, I don't think, until very late on. Um, and then they didn't realise that Steve Borthwick had signed a contract extension with Leicester Tigers. So it's cost them an awful lot of money to go and get their man. If that was the succession plan, they haven't done it in a way that... Um, perhaps they thought was going to happen and, and be as easy as well. Steve's only got to the end of the year. Well, he signed a contract at Leicester, an extension. Why, is a, it, why has he done an extension? Well, they won the Premiership last year, so I, I know. But as in more, more money, or do you think in his mind he had? Oh, I'm going to stay a bit longer. Well, it, it, I think his contract was due to expire at the end of this season, and then they win the Premiership last year. And Leicester have been very astute in what they've done. They've said, "Oh, we've got a coach here that's turned the club around with Kevin Sinfield." And we're now Premiership champions, so we're going to reward him with a contract extension. Probably, I don't know about the money, probably more money, who knows. Maybe it's just more security. You know the game we're in. Rugby is in a difficult spot financially. So if you're Steve Borthwick, and obviously Borthers at some point would have thought to himself, I want to be England coach. He came to Leicester as a head coach to get head coach experience so that one day he could be England head coach. Um, but ultimately, Leicester have said to him, you know, congratulations, you've won, won the Premiership, we're going to give you a reward you with a contract extension. But also in doing that, they're protecting themselves a bit because they've, they've foreseen the fact that the RFU would probably come after them at some point. So they want financially reward him for that. And I say reward him for releasing him from his contract. So I think he had maybe two, if not three years on the contract um, extension that he signed. So the RFU have had to pay out that. Kevin Sinfield's one. Um, How much do you reckon? If you had to guess. We, can, to we guess, can guess and make it up. The mill. A mill. I what? reckon. I reckon. To get him out of the contract, this is before we paid him as well. So to get him out of the contract, Kevin Sinfield as well. He was on a long term contract, from what I understand. Um, and rightly so. Leicester are protecting their asset. Their asset was their head coach, Steve Borthwick, and their most inspirational coach, probably, that anyone's ever worked with in Sir Kevin Sinfield, who ran the defence. Mid season. Look, look at the job they did last year. Um, and for them to rip it out of the club, you know, we're in December, you know. Mid-season, you've then, how do the club then go and find someone that's available? Who's available right now? Well, there isn't anyone that they can see is available from the outside. So they're promoted from within, giving it to Richard Wigglesworth, who's been in that environment, been in the Saracens environment, worked under Steve. So for some continuity to the end of the season. But the knock-on effect to Leicester, let's not forget that uh, I mentioned the financial situation the game's in. They've already lost two home games this year because of the Wasps and the Worcester games were cancelled. So in terms of revenue streams, you've lost two games, right? You then rip the coaches out mid-season, England take them. So unless you're happy with the financial package that the RFU are going to put in front of Leicester and say, you know, here's X amount of cash to, we want Steve Borthwick now, they've then got to factor in what does the knock-on effect of that have to the playing squad? You know, because you're then talking about knockout games. We've got last 16 in Europe quarterfinals in Europe that could both be at home. Massive paydays for the club in terms of selling tickets, selling corporate, the Andy Gutu, it'll be absolutely rammed. You know, everything that goes on in the stadium. So they factor that in as well. If the performance now drops off and they don't get these home knockout games, maybe a home premiership semi-final as well, they're numbers that are all factored in into the profit and loss of, an, of a rugby club. So they have to look at this as to what the knock-on effect would be to release Steve Borthwick, and that's part of it. So I don't know the number. I've got no intel at all. I've not asked anyone at Leicester Tigers. It's none of my business. Uh, if I was going to put a number on it for Steve and Kev Sinfield, let's say a milli. A milli, baby. Wow, a mil. And that's the thing. When you look at actually from the outside and you look at it solely on Leicester, championship team, won the Prem, England won a new coach, they know about Steve, then you see why they've gone for him. You see why they've gone for Kev Sinfield, not only... Is I think, he, well, I think Steve said, I'm coming. Only. But I'm bringing <coughs> Kev Sinfield. So, you well, know, you it, I think then you have to... 
the RFU have to go and negotiate with Leicester to get Kevin Sinfield as well. So it's not just... he. If you go into a head coach's role, and this is one thing I always said to Jordan Murphy when he was head coach at, at Leicester, you've got, if you get in that job, at some point you're getting sacked and the, the, a finger will get pointed at you. you know, there's very few coaches that choose to leave on their own terms. You know, Even Arsene Wenger in football, he left. people said he left it too long. Mark McCall at Saracens, unbelievable job he's done. Obviously, there was the issues with the salary cap, but he will leave that club probably when he wants to but every other coach around you look at that people get sacked right mm. so unless if you're taking on the head coach's role you have to do it and demand what you want as a head coach so your coaches your people in behind you otherwise you're not doing the job that you want to do you're relying on other people choosing your support staff so you know, if the RFU said to Borthers well you know you can here's a job but Kevin Sinfield's too much Borthers probably go well I'm staying at Leicester then so you either get him and he comes with me. So you're doing it on your terms. Whereas I don't think Jordan ever did it on his terms. I think it was all, and you interviewed Simon Cohen. I think Simon Cohen was pulling a lot of the strings because Jordan was an inexperienced, younger head coach director of rugby. Um, and now you have to have the the cojones effectively to say, no, you want me, we do it my way. Because you're at, the finger eventually gets point, pointed at that head coach. So I think, yeah, I think from what I understand, Steve Borthwick's probably said, you know, I'm only coming if, Kev Sinfield comes with, Sir Kev Sinfield comes with me as well. And the lay of the land. So you think, right, a progression from winning the Prem, is it winning Europe? And this isn't meant to sound derogatory towards the tournament. How big a deal is that now? You know, so if you're Steve, right, if you're Steve, you've won the Prem, you've lost Genji, you've lost 4D, you haven't been as good this season, right, there's a World Cup at the end for a lot of players, so yes, they want to perform. I'm not saying that these are the reasons why. I'm just trying to put a little bit of flavour into the mix of like what is left for him to do. So if you've won the Prem, can you back it up without two of your best players? I don't know. Europe is at the same poll. Well, England have come in top job. No real pressure, I don't imagine, to win the World Cup next year. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, as in, you could hide behind that. He signed a five-year deal, so the one will be in Australia in 2027. Seven. Wow, God, we're old. <laughs> we are. They're going don't, to expect results though, aren't they? Well, yeah, I mean, they England, should get England, them. England, a good yeah, team. The size of the playing pool, the size of the union, you know, standing in the game, we should be doing a hell of a lot better than we do. You know, and that's over the last two years under Eddie Jones, we've underperformed. You can't get away from that. People talk about Eddie Jones's record; he's the coach with the, the the biggest win percentage. Yeah, he is, and that was all at the start. But the last two years have been two and a bit years, three years probably have been pretty dour. Um, so they've made the change, and do I think the timing's right? I said it last week. I don't know, it's a panic from the RFU and they've panicked again and gone and got Steve Borthwick and they're trying to say, oh, it's succession planning. Well, you know, the whole negotiation isn't a sign that it was great succession planning because they didn't know necessarily that Borthwick had signed a contract <laughs> extension at Leicester. But, you know, he'll be judged on performances and is he the right man for it? Well, if we win the Six Nations, win the World Cup, yes, he is. But that is cutthroat coaching, right? It's res results-driven. He'll have, as Jim says, the, the ability to lean on the fact that if we don't go past the quarters or the semis in the World Cup, then he's only just taken over. And as Eddie Jones said, judge me on a World Cup, mate. But he won't necessarily be judged on the very first one because he'll have that excuse of, I haven't had enough time to implement everything I want to implement. But he won't leave any stone unturned. He's the most dedicated, um, you know, he's the ultimate rugby nose, isn't he, Steve Borthwick? in terms of coaching and the detail he goes into and how much he puts into it. And obviously Kevin Sinfield will have a big impact. The first thing he needs to sort out is our attack coach. You know, who's going who's go to play that time? Sam Vesti. You know, do you go yeah, after him at Northampton? Northampton struggling there. Their year. attack's good, though. Although they didn't score a try this yeah. weekend against Saints. I was going to say, the, this but, apart from this weekend. Uh, but this is the thing, you know, Kevin Nick Sinfield. Evans, I've heard Nick Evans. Really? Yeah, have heard Nick Evans. Really? Yeah. Not from Cockers, not from Richards. <laughs> <laughs> no, just but through the great value. Uh, this is the thing. So you look at Leicester's success last year, and England fans, and I think, and I've said it on here, I think England should have gone after Scott Robertson. You know, from what everything you hear about how he coaches, the environment, the culture, results, the, the way he plays, and all, all that stuff, or his teams play, that would be exciting for England. You look at Steve Borthwick now, look at the way Leicester played last year, Yes, they got success, they won it, but they don't set the world alight in terms of attack. And we've got some unbelievable attacking players. So Steve Borthwick needs to employ a attack coach that can get the best out of a Marcus Smith, 
the Manitou Alangia, Henry Slade and Owen Farrell. You know, the wingers that we've got, the young talent that's in the in, in the England squad and in and around it. That is the bit that it's the hardest bit, I think, to to make everyone happy with. But it's something that he certainly needs to look at because now he's got Kevin Sinfield as his defence coach. Does Cockers keep his job as a forwards coach? Does you know, obviously Gleason carry on as the attack coach or does he look for other people? So Proudfoot. Matt Proudfoot as well, scrum coach. We shall see. Do you think you'll see any big changes as far as the way England play? I reckon no. Would he go for someone like Genji as captain? You had him at Leicester, freshen things up. I think you need to move Farrell back to 10. I don't really know. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Like Goody said, everything you hear about Borthos is that he's intense, like ridiculously intense, like loves the game, understands the game, and quote-unquote anyone who's worked with him, hands down, the best coach I've ever worked with. Wiggy says it. So Richard Wigglesworth, who's now Leicester head coach, which is mental for him, which is unbelievable for him, but crazy when you think how things can turn around, said he's the best coach I've ever worked with. And think about who he's worked with at Saracens and Sale and England back in the day. So they got the right man. So if things need to be changed, I think Borthers will make the hard decisions. If they need to change the captain, if they need to put Faz at 10 or put Faz on the bench and put Marcus Smith. Yeah, I, I agree with you. If you're talking stylistically around how we play, I don't see a massive amount of change at the minute under Steve Borthwick. You know, short term, he'd be thinking... I've just got to get that fucking Calcutta Cup back. Because <laughs> Game remember, one. I can't remember when the last time we had it. Um, and that's the thing. It's, it's them results driven where you build momentum. And I think he'll go... Risk averse is probably the wrong word, but his style of play is that Saracens-esque, initial Saracens-esque way of a lot of kicking. You sort your foundations out. You set piece, you forward, power play, you know, your kicking game, your defence, and then tag on the attack further down the line so I don't think we'll see massive changes Eddie Jones loved to kick the ball didn't he and you have to kick it a lot at international level to those to, to force those errors and gain the territory and all that stuff but yeah I can't see a, a, a massive stylistic change between now and, and the World Cup one thing's for sure the RFU have got money <laughs> they have now haven't yeah. they do you know what I mean like, as in when you you break it down however yeah. they found the money and if it's gone from 200 grand to buy Borthers out of a contract to a million pound which we're presuming, or we're guessing, effectively. But either way, they got a lot of money, haven't they, when it really matters? Yeah. And you have not even paid them both yet? No. Show me the fucking money. Pod, 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 pod. Rugby pod.